Well, fans from the beautiful Caribe Royale here in Orlando, Florida, Premier Boxing Champions presents our co-main event special attraction in the super welterweight division. Brought to you by TGB Promotions in association with Warriors Boxing and the Box Lab and sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside, all from the state of Florida, David DeJong, Fred Flutie, and Michael Ross. Introducing our referee in charge, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Emil Lombardi. All right, fans, here we go. 10 rounds of boxing for the WBA Continental Latino Super Welterweight Championship. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with red and green trim, fighting out of Las Vegas by way of Guigue, Carabobo, Venezuela. He weighed in at already 153 pounds. His record, 35 wins, three losses, with 34 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the knockout-minded contender, the battle-tested veteran warrior known as the Cello Mantojas. Introducing Johan Gonzalez. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Entering the ring wearing white trunks with silver trim, he is fighting out of Stafford, Texas, by way of Santiago de Cuba. He weighed in at 153 and three quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his young campaign in the ring with a record of eight wins, no losses. Six wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated young super welterweight world rank sensation. Introducing Johanny Stages. Once again, our third man in the ring now to give instructions, Emil Lombardi. All right, guys, let's go. Right, we went over the rules in the dressing room, right? I expect a good, clean fight out of both of you. Pay close attention to my commands. Protect yourself at all times. Touch him up, wait for the bell. BZ, walk us through the numbers. As you can see, the tail of the tape, very even in size, the same height, the one inch reach advantage for Gonzalez. The real question is, with 30 more pro fight experience, how much will that advantage play for Johan Gonzalez? Yoannis Tejas needs to take up a residency here at the Caribe Royale. This is his fifth fight here in his last six. <laughs> he told us he likes the vibes. It reminds him of Santiago de Cuba. And he's had a lot of success in this building just the same. Gonzalez sticks him with the jab. Gonzalez in the black trunks with the green trim. Tejas in the silver trunks. Tejas has a devastating left hook. Oh, yes. the left hand, he sneaks in, and a body shot there by Gonzalez. He comes back upstairs. And when we ask Gonzalez about that youth of Tejas in terms of what kinds of mistakes does he make, he said he's a young fighter who puts his hands down on counter shots and will be looking to take advantage of that tonight. Gonzalez not hesitating. Working that jab nice in the first round. Being more active than Tejas. This is a change of pace compared to the last fight. <laughs> this is more of a first round feeler that I was talking about that we didn't get in that last fight. Here's a short uppercut by Tejas. And Gonzalez back on the jab. Again, Gonzalez pops the jab. Right over the right hand that was held a little low, like BC just mentioned. There's a right hand around the guard of Gonzalez. Uh, 
Tejas is so supremely confident in there. He has the poise of a veteran despite being just 24. Missed with that left hand. And a right to the body by Gonzalez. Yeah, he's very confident in his footing, his posture. He's very poised for a young man with only eight fights in professional career. Here's a left hand, hits the guard of Gonzalez. Tejas switching stances right now. Mm-hmm. About the southpaw. Now orthodox. Ten seconds. And he's able to work the jab off of this. But the water. I water. Okay, now listen. All you gotta do is keep boxing, okay? But look, I want you to go right handed this round, okay? But listen, you gotta, you gotta double and triple the jab. When you get close, run combination. Okay? And sometimes think. Okay? How you feel? Good. Okay, so no problem first round, okay? But we gotta pick it up. I don't need close round, okay? Close, close round, we don't need that. Okay, you, you saw what happened in the first fight, right? Okay. Ronnie Shields in the corner of Yoenis Tejas. Johan Gonzalez has got a great one. The Hall of Famer Ismael Salas in his corner. Two great trainers. Two electrifying fighters here. Our co-feature, PBC on Prime. And Tay is back to fighting Orthodox. He was told to fight this whole round Orthodox. I just want to see you right-handed for this round. So let's see if he stays like this for the rest of the fight or if he'll continue to switch back and forth. And stays on the jab like Ronnie Shields told him. Here he pokes the jab at the body of Gonzalez. But Gonzalez has certainly done the work with the jab. You can see from Gonzalez and his experience that he is not worried about the young man. He is more than comfortable. He will not be intimidated. The power jab by Gonzalez. Tejas comes back. Tejas has to be wary of letting Gonzalez outwork him in the early going here. She popped a double jab there to Gonzalez. Oh, good one, two. And a right hand by Gonzalez. Gonzalez caught Tejas dipping perfectly with that sharp right. I mean, like you just mentioned, the work rate from Gonzalez is superior. His trainer, Ronnie Shields, just said, I don't want close rounds. You saw what happened in the first fight. Exactly. Short uppercut hits the guard of Gonzalez. They exchange jabs. There's the right hand by Tejas. A little thudding power on that shot as well. Double right hand from Gomez. Or Gonzalez. Gets the ropes, Gonzalez gets Tejas, and Tejas steps away. <laughs> Gonzalez just keeps working that quick jab, offsetting Tejas' rhythm. There's that uppercut. But Tejas' eyes are wide open. He's looking for how to get something in on the inside. Oh, tough jab, triple jab there by Gonzalez. Feeling good about his work rate as he connects with a combination on Tejas. You can see a little bit of a red blotch above the left, left eye, eye of, Tejas. of Tejas. Those jabs are adding up for the veteran. Tejas had never been cut, never been down. Lo único que quiero es que te me concentres, por favor. Tú estás haciendo la cosa bien. 
Mira, doing things right. Si te, si te estás dando cuenta, Chelo, If you're looking at this, él, él ya empezó, como tú le estás tirando derecha arriba, él se está forward. Métele un ya y métele un open Go for the jab and the uppercut. Como si fuera un uno dos. Like a one, y después two. se lo cambia. And ah. then you just change it up. No me esté diciendo que sí, después no lo haga. Don't just tell me yes and not do it. Concéntrate en esta Focus. mierda. Ah, bueno. Vamos, vamos. Vamos, vamos. ¿Te acuerdas los Just remember the, hit, the punches. You can go on the bottom. You can go to the basement. Don't just tell me yes. I want you to do it. You're doing well. Tú vas muy bien, nene. Concéntrate en esta mierda. Both of these guys are coming off victories. Gonzalez KO'd Ivan Herrera in the second round in August in a fight he had in Venezuela. But he said Ismael Salas had a sit down with him after that Ramos loss he suffered last year. And he said they had a heart to heart on how they had to change some things going forward. One of the things that Gonzalez did, he has moved permanently here to Las Vegas now. Brought his wife, his daughter, back in May. Gonzalez. So now lives here in the States. Yeah, and what Gonzalez said was at 33, he knows he's not too old, but he also knows the window is closing. Now is the time. He believes an upset win here gets him a title shot, so you know the motivation for Gonzalez. And he's making the young kid work early on. Talked about that redness above that left arm. There's that left hook by Tears. Overhand right by Tears in combination. Gonzalez sticks his tongue out. Is swinging a little wide. He landed a nice right hand. He got a little happy. He wanted to land a big one. Back on his defense. There's the left hook. Missed with that right hand. Sweeping right hands by both fighters. They exchange jabs. Tejas is still allowing Gomez to outwork him, but he is coming into his own here in the third round. Switching back to Southpaw now. As Gonzalez backs him to the rope, Tejas steps around. This round has been some of Tejas' best work of the fight so Here's far. right hand by Tejas. Right on cue, BC. Body shot by Gonzalez. Gonzalez looking to cut the ring off on Tejas. Tejas looking to use the ring to his advantage. Final 30 seconds here, round three. You know, Tejas made a statement earlier this week that he believes that, Go that Gonzalez fades later on in the fight. That might be some of the reasons why we're seeing this slow start. He might really be looking to open up more in the second half of this fight. Quick one, two, a left by Tejas. And another left hand. He's back to fighting Southpaw. Time. The only thing you need to do is what I tell you to do. You keep this up, you gotta throw both hands. If not, I'm gonna take the gloves off. This is round four. Body shot there by Tejas. He started this round a little more active. Very quick combination. It seems when Tejas goes southpaw, he's more slicker. When he goes to the orthodox stance, he's looking to load up with that right hand. Gonzalez has stayed behind the jab. There's a one-two by Tejas. And he's trying to find that uppercut. There's a body shot by Gonzalez. Left hook to the body by Tejas. Right hand, Gonzalez. 
Nice body work and uppercut by Tejas. More body shots. Double jab by Tejas. There's the overhand right by Tejas. Tejas might be exchanging more than Ronnie Shields wants him to, but it's working right now. First three rounds, you could tell he was just getting a feeler in. Based on that statement earlier, I believe that he's going to continue to up the punch rate as the fight continues. He continues to try to pepper the body of Gonzalez with that left hook. There's a one-two, though, right through the guard by Gonzalez. Gonzalez's corner said, I need you to use both hands, and that's what he's doing. There's the right hand by Tejas. Missed with that one. That was the biggest punch of the fight for either fighter. There's another right to the body by Tejas. And Tejas is now on his front foot instead of his back foot like he has been for the past three rounds. Tejas starting to go downhill, exactly. You can see the confidence building. There's the uppercut. There's the left that knocked Gonzalez back a step. As he loaded up with that right hand. Couple of body shots to the body of Gonzalez. I could hear him digging into the body from here. Uppercut to end the round. Probably the best round for Tay is thus far. Without a doubt. You don't know what you're doing. I keep telling you what to do. You're not listening. Come on. You know how to work those punches on the bottom. You haven't even thrown a left hook. Did you forget about this? We've worked on the upper, on the hook, all with the left. Really? If you keep this up, I'm going to take the gloves off and they're going to stop the fight. They're going to stop this fight. Let's take a look back at the action. The best round from Tejas so far here in round four. Not only that lead right hand, but it's the way he's getting out of the counter punches from Gonzalez. You saw that big right cross as Tejas makes an early statement. And you heard the Hall of Famer, Ismael Salas. You talk about the sense of urgency for Gonzalez at 33. He wants him to throw that left hook. Great trainer like Salas can feel that momentum changing. And a good response early on here from Gonzalez. You see the total punches from that last round. Tejas was 67. Gonzalez throws 60 of them, but Tejas landed nearly 50% of those power punches. Everything minus the jab. Our Brian Campbell with these unofficial scorecard. He's got this fight all even as we hit round five, scheduled for 10. Tay is a young man who came to this country two years ago from Cuba. He wanted his, his career to take off. This young man traveled through Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, to Mexico. He was jailed there for five days. Finally got bailed out, entered the States. Said he did it riding in cars, riding on a motorcycle, rode a horse and walk a lot. There's the overhand right by Tejas. This is a key round for Gonzalez. He's just one in three in fights that have gone beyond the fifth round. There's a lot of early knockouts in his record. Here's the body shot. 
And what? goes upstairs is Taz. But there's Gonzalez comes right back with a right hand. I like how Taz is mixing it up. Going high, going low, looking for the uppercut. Taz also really sitting down on that jab and making it a weapon. Constantly got Gonzalez guessing. Taz throwing that looping right hand. Now Gonzalez coming forward. Final 30 here, round five. Oh, double left hook to the body by Taez. Right hand. Gomez saying, come on, give me more. 10 seconds. Halfway point of this fight here, watching his son Tim Zhu fight professionally for the first time since Tim's professional debut, which came in 2016. Well, they live in separate countries, but this is a big moment for the family to reunite. Tim's younger brother Nikita also in attendance tonight. This is round six, halfway point. Yoannis Tejas, he's unbeaten at eight and no. Take it on, Johan Gonzalez. Gonzalez now, throwing the jab, right hand to the body. Three punch combination by Gonzalez. Teja's high guard is swallowing a lot of these punches from Gonzalez. Teja's very comfortable at close range. He talked about mixing that Mexican style with the Cuban craft. He's been working the jab well at the opening start of this round. There's the right hand by Teyas, and a right to the body that backs up Gonzalez. You can just see that Teyas is looking for something big. As if, as if he's just been patiently waiting. There's Gonzalez with the left hook to the body. And again, he smiles, sticks his tongue out at the young Teyas. And then pops him with a jab. I've seen that smile come out of Gonzalez after getting hit by big shots in this fight. Gonzalez is in a spot where he needs to gain the respect back. Oh, a left to the body. A jab to the body. Oh, and an uppercut. That's the mixing up that I was talking about last round. He is really coming to his own and feeling more comfortable as the fight continues. There's a right hand again by Tejas. Under a minute here in round six. Second time in his career that Johan Gonzalez has been down. Tejas going for the knockout, looking to stop him. Gonzalez He's got 10 hurt. seconds. When when he throws, you don't throw. How do you feel? But I don't want you to keep getting punched.
Take a look back at the knockdown in round six. That clean right hand put Gonzalez on skates. A one-two combination. The power and the speed of Tejas beginning to catch up with Gonzalez in a big way. Here's round seven. We talked about Tejas' poise. We talked about his slow activity early on. We also talked about him saying how Gonzalez fades later on in the fight. And this is a perfect example on how game plans can affect a match. When you study your opponent ahead of time, you train to be well conditioned, you might just be able to get the fight to go exactly the way you want it to go. Here's the uppercut again. That's a signature of Ronnie Shields' teaching. The Charlo will always use that uppercut. Let's take a look at the power punches through round seven. How about tell you is, you know, when you're landing 50% of your power punches, you're doing work. And it's not just one thing. He's targeting the body, yes, with that left hook. But it's such a beautiful mixture of punches from different angles at very close range. But as you can see, Gonzalez still very much in this fight in this round. Oh, that one rocks him! And Gonzalez is down again! Five, six, siete, ocho. Now bien? Step over here. Step over here. Now bien? Second down, second time he's been down in the fight. Stay is looking to finish Johan Gonzalez. Just over a minute left in the round. That's a right hand, that's it. And this fight is over. Talk about the next generation of Cuban boxers. It appears looking at Tellez that the kids are all right. Yoenis <laughs> Tellez said, oh, I will steal the show because the main event fighters will get a chance to see me fight. He, of course, fights at the 154 weight limit, like our main event fighters. He wanted to make a statement here, and he made an emphatic one again. You didn't know Ioannis Tejas' name coming in. You do now. 9-0 and oh as a professional, and he's got the type of wins that we talked about. Not a, not a, not a prospect. This guy says he's already ready for a world title. Let's see where he can springboard with a breakthrough victory like this. Keith, give me your thoughts on what you saw out of Ioannis Tejas. I, mean, I, I saw a poised fighter. I saw some speed, power. The, the potential to be orthodox, to be southpaw. But when it comes to fighting a champion tomorrow, I would have to say, you know, there's a, there's a little bit more to go. But this kid right here, he's got what it takes. His team is smart. And I'm looking forward to the next move and the next matchup that this young man gets. Drop Gonzalez three times in this fight. The third time he gets the stoppage. And now with just nine professional fights, seven of them have come by knockout by Ioannis Tejas. Let's make it official. Here's our Hall of Famer, Jimmy Lennon Jr.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, 57 seconds in round number seven. Our referee in charge, Emil Lombardi, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated. And now the WBA Continental Latino Super Welterweight Champion, Joanny Stege. Joannis Tejas, still unbeaten, and gets a knockout victory here in Orlando. Fifth fight at the Caribbean Royale. It took Tejas a couple of rounds to figure Gonzalez out, but once he was able to combine the speed, the power with that pinpoint punching, particularly on that right cross, it became a question of how much can Gonzalez take. Tejas wasn't afraid to get hit, and he let his hands go there. It was the action in round six. That was the big right cross that wobbled and dropped Gonzalez. And then round seven, Tejas put on the finishing touches. The first of two knockdowns came on a beautiful check left hook. And then as he went for the finish, Power shots galore from the young kid, 24 years old, but ready seemingly for a lot more smoke than a typical 9-0 fighter would ask for. Tejas ready for it all. If we take a look at the final punch stats again. He landed 51% of his power punches. Anything over 50%, you're doing much work.